Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. In our first story, vacationing friends wanted to save money by staying with us for free. Let's jump right in. A short backstory. We used to live in a different country but moved to Europe, and since then we've gotten too many freeloaders from our old life coming here for free accommodation. Home is currently a large five-bedroom house on a farm in the mountains. It's a small town in the middle of Europe, so it's super peaceful, but we're still close enough to the capital city and other hubs. We used to live in a big city in another country and still have a lot of family and friends there. We've been here for close to 20 years now, and in those first few years, we'd get a steady stream of people coming to stay with us on the pretext, it's so good to see you again. I'm not kidding. Between June and the end of August, we'd have one group leave and another arrive. Hospitality being what it is, we never asked these people to pay for their stay, and they never offered. The first year was bearable, but after three or four years of this, we're over it. These freeloading leeches had other family and friends within a few hours of us, and we heard from some of these people that these freeloaders planned their European itinerary according to where they could stay and eat for free, consistently abusing our culture of hospitality. About three or four years into being a free bed and breakfast, news got back to us about how cheap we are. We're a family of five, so when you get another entire family that comes in, that's a whole lot of mouths to feed. Often, we'd cook up a large pot of meat and vegetable stew with homemade bread or a large roast. We'd also try to take our guests to a local attraction. So imagine when the news gets back to you that we crammed their whole family into one room, gave them crappy food, and took them to boring places. There were also complaints by some that they left our house hungry. One family went as far as to have lost a valuable piece of digital gear and accused my kids of stealing it. They later found it in the car of another friend, but didn't bother to apologize for the accusations. Not all of our out-of-town guests were bad, though. These are the ones that have been invited to come back. The rest have never been invited back, and if they do call, we ask them if we can make a reservation for them at a local hotel. I'm so sick of kicking one or more of my kids out of their rooms to accommodate choosing beggars and then have their crap all over my house. They take all your hospitality and expect more, then have the nerve to complain that you don't offer enough food, we don't have the right drinks, because we hardly ever buy sodas or snacks, go outside and pick some fresh fruit, and that it's boring here. Needless to say, ever since we're no longer available as a free destination, we're the ones being called cheapskates by choosing beggars. These people come to Europe and won't pay a single night's accommodation in a hotel because they look for suckers to take them in for free. We don't care though as long as they don't come here. In story number two, I worked for a realtor that is dumb. I worked very temporarily for a woman who couldn't find an assistant in her office. It was only her and her small firm. She got the advice that paying $10 an hour wouldn't really pull in people willing to do quality work, so she should pay more and see the type of applicant pool she could choose between. I picked up this position as a second job. She knew my boss, and because we weren't so busy, they were meant to work out a deal where I got a raise. They'd split the cost of my pay rate, and I'd be paid for 40 hours of work, working only part-time hours between both jobs at most. Let me say, the split was already a bad idea, but I put way too much trust in the situation. This woman was nuts. She had her sister coming into the office when she was out to give me a version of... If you ever hurt her, she didn't believe in breaks. She'd say I could take a break or go to lunch, work, whenever I'd like, but she'd always scoff if I actually took a break, even for lunch, or if I was in the office and not physically moving. She expected me to drive an hour and a half for a single errand while paying for my own gas. She's a realtor that likes decorating her clients' houses before they move in, and she expected me to buy decorations after driving an hour and a half and to be reimbursed later. 
One morning, she expected me to drop everything and meet her at a house she was renting. No warning, just calling and expecting that I could drive to this place ready to work within 15 minutes. I lived 25 minutes away, so I couldn't. She didn't like that and asked me to at least rush if I was going to be late, even though I didn't know about this happening before. Why wasn't I just magically ready? She'd insist that I send out emails with no information on what an issue was, and we'd redo emails at least six times. Each draft, she'd give a little more info, and a little more info, and at the same time insist, yeah, just send it out. It would run as, hurry, 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 this is good to go, wait, except, actually, you should say, it was bad. I was driving about 40 minutes from my home in a pandemic and wasn't having a great time. Finally, I talked to my boss and asked what the rate was. Things weren't clear, and she found a way to pay $9 an hour, $1 less than what she'd paid other people, and she expected at least 40 hours, not at most 18 like my boss had pitched. I didn't even go into the office again to quit. And she didn't have anything to say when I mentioned $9 an hour was very little money for full-time work with no benefits. In story number three, Karen tries to get free chocolate for her child. It's my first time posting here, I'm on mobile, and English isn't my first language and all those things. Currently, I am working a part-time job at a nearby grocery store located at one of the not-so-nice localities in my city. So today, this one child, a six-year-old female, came to the store and wanted to buy a five rupees chocolate, but only had three rupee with her. I denied that at first, but when she said that's all the money she had, I gave her the chocolate and didn't take the payment as well. I know there's a high chance she was lying, but I took my chance and was trying to be nice. Plus, I also knew this child's father passed away recently, who was the only earning member in their family. An hour later, this other child, a 12-year-old male, comes in and demands his free chocolate. And I'm like, what? There's no free chocolates being given away here. He left without saying anything. I thought of it as a child simply trying his luck out after hearing from his friend that I had given her chocolate and didn't take payment from her. Five minutes later, this Karen comes storming into the store shouting at me and demanding that I immediately give her son a free chocolate as well. I tried to explain to her that we are not giving away free chocolates, and when she mentioned the previous incident where I gave the poor girl one chocolate for free, I explained that it was at my discretion, and not because the girl had requested it to be free or demanded it like she was doing. The Karen then goes full blast and starts shouting at me about how rude I am, how I should treat all the children of the area the same and should give her son a chocolate right then or else I will have to face the consequences. I keep my calm and ask her to leave the store as I will not be giving away anything for free no matter what. She goes full Karen and shouts at me, how I'm going to regret this, how she's going to talk to the owner about me giving away free stuff to others, and how she's going to make sure that I lose my job as well. She continues her rant, telling me how she'll make sure the owner doesn't take in, I'm quoting her here, uneducated slum dogs, which is a literal translation for my language, like me to work in the store anymore. I've had enough of this crap, but still, I keep my calm and ask her to get out of the store or I'm going to call the cops on her, and also add that we have cameras installed, so she'll definitely get in trouble if she forces me to call the cops, plus adding two more things. One, I am not an uneducated slum dog, but currently, I'm pursuing my master's degree, so she shouldn't judge or insult people out of the blue, and two... This is my dad's store, and she ain't going to get no crap done trying to talk to the owner and fire me. Man, the expression on her face was priceless as she left the store. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, subscribe and make sure you click on the notifications bell so that YouTube will actually put it in your feed. We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.